Long before you finish building your model ship, you should be thinking about um, how you're going to display the model and the type of case that you need. And you also need to discuss, maybe with your wife, where that model is going to, to sit in your home, because they do take a lot of space. Um, I tend to add uh, at least an inch, an inch and a half to the front and back of the model and not less than an inch to the top of the model. And that will give you the rough dimensions of the size of the case that you're going to build. The second challenge that you have is um, making the frame that holds the glass or plastic um, as inconspicuous as possible. The whole purpose of the case is to display the model and not to display the case. So the smaller you can make the frame, the more your model is going to stand out. So the first job we have is the selection of timber. Down to the lumber yard we went and selected um, from the available timber from a good friend of mine, Hato Pida, who not only plants timber but also reaps and provides high quality timber. These are the two woods that we are going to use to make the case. The one on the right is called Black Heart and it's a wood very much like walnut. The wood on the left is called Juniper. Um, it's again a very hard wood. Um, uh, it's referred to as a white wood and we're going to mix these two woods to give some level of contrast uh, to make the case up. The two uh, woods that have been machined first on the table saw to get rid of all the sap then on the shaper to get two level surfaces then on the thickness planer to bring them to the required size. This shows you the contrast between the two woods. This shows the, uh, the case on my last model, the Bologna, and one of the challenges we have when we make these cases is to try and make sure that the model is in fact the thing that we see and not the case. Um, this was my first case and I was pretty happy with it except it became very heavy and um, it was very difficult to move it around. Taking you to the end, and um, this is what we are going to build. Um, so, just giving you a quick view, so you get an idea. And so I decided uh, that I would use acrylic on the next case that I made, um, and I would make the case so that I could take it apart if a sheet cracked or needed to be changed that it was very easy to take the top of the bottom off and change that sheet. In the case of the, in the first case that I built, if a pane breaks, unfortunately I have a major issue to replace that glass. I'll actually have to cut the top of the bottom off and slip the broken pane out and then you want in and then restick it. In terms of the joins, you have to work out um, how you're going to join the frames. And in my case, we decided we would use a compound mitre join. So these are the two ends. Um, and so you need to make a template um, so that you're not fooling around. You have a good understanding of what the various pieces are. And if you don't have a template, you're actually going to cut for a complex join like this. You're going to cut uh, a wrong piece. Uh, in terms of how the glass sits, this was from the first frame where I had a wooden frame around the glass and the wooden frame fitted into um, this piece here. In the case of the frame I'm going to build now, the glass slipped straight into a groove which was one eighth thick, um, a little more than one eighth thick to take the thickness of the glass itself. This was the post from the, the first one and 
uh, again, you need to work all these out to make sure that they're dimensionally correct and identical so that when you start assembling it, um, the post can interchange um, from any of the four ends uh, up or down. The more the interchangeability of the post, um, the less chance of, of having an error in it. It's always a real hassle to, to drill holes when you made up frames. So we've made up this little jig. Um, we located the hole um, and basically what that means is we'll put this jig on the frame and it'll drill the hole in exactly the same place every time on the drill press. So here we go. Have it upside down to show you what we're doing, and then we'll flip it over. So that's what it looks like. Center the hole um, with no power on, and. Uh, That means that hole is going to be in the same place for every single one. Today we are going to use the Proxon Shaper to route the edges of the post for the case. Make sure our safety glasses are on. Nice quarter round, and when it's finished, this is what it looks like. All four post, all ready to go for final sanding. Um, we've just um, cut the groove in the top frame, and while we were cutting it, we realized there were huge spaces all along the edge, both on the side and of course the same bow that we had mentioned before. I will switch the bottom with the top and build up the new bottom with a half inch piece of the same wood which I'll laminate and stick down and hopefully that will take care of the warping in one piece of the frame. I'm not sure how it happened but it happened. So here's the uh, clamp piece, it's late at night um, and uh, we've laminated the frame so it's going to end up just about a, an inch thick and hopefully that will have resolved the problem we'll see in the morning when we unclamp it it's hoping it still has a slight bend but um, with the weight of all the plastic and the rest of the wood it shouldn't be a problem looks a bit messy now but when it's all cleaned up um, you really won't see it we 
you're trying to reduce the amount of wood that you see when you look at the frame so this is really a nice way it's a use the router you have to do this first and we have this half round which we're going to stick on after and again this has to be rounded before you put it on because you can't put the router in there to get that shape and this should reduce the the effect of the wood quite a bit I use a West Epoxy whenever I'm doing woodwork because it's really so simple to mix and all popsicle sticks make the greatest applica applicators the pumps it's one full pump down each um, but over the years I've got to when I have to make smaller amounts I actually have a feel now and can mix s much smaller amounts so I don't waste too much of the epoxy. I tend to put a very small amount on both sides. Lots of used gloves, always remember um, they're real inexpensive to use gloves.